Hello grade 11s and welcome back to the topic acids and bases. In today's lesson, we will have a look at the different acid-base theories that were put forward to try and define and explain the nature of acids and bases. For thousands of years, people have known that vinegar, lemon juice and many other foods taste sour. However, it was not until a few hundred years ago that they discovered why these things taste sour. It's because they are all acids. The term acid, in fact, comes from the Latin term acer, which means sour. As you know, acids and bases each have quite distinctive properties. Acids have a sour taste and they corrode metals. Bases have a slippery feel. We will investigate different theories of acids and bases to try and explain why they have these properties. Some common laboratory acids include nitric acid, sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, and ethanoic acid. Some common bases include ammonia, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, sodium carbonate, and sodium bicarbonate. Let us now have a look at some acid-base theories. The Swedish scientist Svante Arrhenius introduced an acid-base theory in 1887. He proposed the theory that acids are substances that ionize in water to produce hydrogen ions and bases dissociate in water to produce hydroxide ions. For example, hydrochloric acid ionizes in water according to this equation to produce H plus ions and Cl minus ions. In our definitions for acids and bases, we mention the terms ionize and dissociate to explain the production of ions in an acid and base solution. Let us define these terms. Ionizing is the process in which covalently bonded compounds such as acids break up into ionic substances for the first time. We speak about acids ionizing. Dissociation is the process in which ionically bonded compounds, such as bases, break up into their ions in the presence of water. We have seen that hydrochloric acid ionizes into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. The fact that hydrogen ions, the H plus ions, are produced is what makes hydrochloric acid an acid, according to Arrhenius' theory. It is now known that hydrogen ions cannot exist on their own in solution and that a hydrogen ion quickly combines with the water molecule to produce the hydronium or oxonium ion, H3O+. Here we have the equation for the combining of the hydrogen ion with the water molecule. The product is the hydronium ion, H3O+. It is the presence of the hydronium ions that give acids their acidic properties. The H plus ion and the H3O plus ion are really one and the same thing, and therefore acids can be explained by the presence of H plus or H3O plus ions in solution. A base, such as sodium hydroxide, dissociates in water according to this equation. It is the presence of OH minus ions that give bases their properties. So, according to Arrhenius' theory, Acids are substances that ionize in solution to produce H plus ions and ultimately H3O plus ions. Bases are substances that dissociate in solution to produce OH minus ions. Arrhenius' theory of acids and bases remained undisputed until 1923. Then the Danish scientist Johannes Bronsted and the Englishman Thomas Lowry refined Arrhenius' theory of acids and bases. The bronsted lowry definition of acids is very similar to the Arrhenius definition. A bronsted lowry acid is defined as any substance that can donate a proton. Acids are proton donors because an H plus ion without its electron is simply a proton. But instead of describing bases as substances that ionize to form OH minus ions, as Arrhenius' theory does, the bronsted lowry definition of a base is that a base is a substance that accepts protons. Let's use the example of hydrochloric acid in water. During the reaction, the hydrochloric acid loses or donates a proton, an H plus ion, and becomes Cl minus. HCl is a proton donor and is therefore an acid. 
Now let's consider ammonia in water. During the reaction, the NH3 gains or accepts a proton, an H plus ion, and becomes NH4 plus. NH3 is a proton acceptor and is therefore a base. Now we will look at a few acid-base reactions and investigate the acid-base pairs that form during the reaction. Remember, in any acid-base reaction, the acid is the proton donor and the base is the proton acceptor. That means that one of the reactants loses an H plus ion and the other substance gains an H plus ion. The acid is the proton donor and the base is the proton acceptor. Let's look at the reaction equations to identify which reactant is the acid and which is the base. This is the general form of an acid-based reaction. The double arrow in this reaction means that it is a reversible reaction. We read the forward reaction from left to right and the reverse reaction from right to left. When the forward reaction occurs, HX donates a proton to H2O and in doing so become X minus. HX is a proton donor and is therefore an acid because acids are proton donors. When HX donates a proton to H2O, HX becomes X minus. HX and X minus are said to be an acid base pair. In fact, the correct term to use here is that this is a conjugate acid base pair. Conjugate acid base pairs are compounds that differ by the presence of one proton, or H plus ion. All acids have a conjugate base, which is formed when their proton has been donated. Likewise, all bases have a conjugate acid formed after they have accepted the proton. If we have a look at the first conjugate acid base pair in this reaction, the conjugate base of the acid HX is X minus. This is because if you look at the reaction in reverse, X minus acts as a proton acceptor as it becomes HX. X minus is therefore a base. In the forward reaction, H2O is a proton acceptor as it accepts a proton to become H3O plus. H2O is therefore a base. H3O plus is the conjugate acid of H2O. This is the final reaction showing both conjugate acid base pairs. In the first pair, the acid is HX and the base is X minus. In the second pair, the base is H2O and the acid is H3O plus. Look at the numbering of the conjugate acid base pairs more clearly. It does not matter which pair you call pair 1 or which pair you call pair 2, as long as the two substances in the same pair have the same number. There are always two conjugate acid base pairs in each reaction, so make sure that you find and label two conjugate acid base pairs in each reaction. Here is another example. Try to identify the conjugate acid base pairs in this reaction. When the forward reaction occurs, HCl donates a proton to NH3 and in doing so becomes Cl-. HCl is a proton donor and is therefore an acid because acids are proton donors. When HCl donates a proton to NH3, in doing so, HCl becomes Cl-. HCl and Cl- form a conjugate acid base pair. In the first conjugate acid base pair in this reaction, the conjugate base of the acid HCl is Cl-. In the forward reaction, NH3 is a proton acceptor as it accepts a proton to become NH4+. NH3 is therefore a base. NH4 plus is the conjugate acid of NH3. This is the final reaction showing both conjugate acid base pairs. Now we will look at some reactions that illustrate the role of water in acid base reactions. In this reaction, H2O reacts with NH3. NH3 is a base and therefore acts as a proton acceptor. So, in this reaction, H2O takes the role of an acid, a proton donor. 
In this second example, H2O reacts with HCl. HCl is an acid and therefore acts as a proton donor. So in this case, H2O takes the role of a base, a proton acceptor. Some substances, such as water, have the ability to act as either an acid or a base, in that they can donate or accept a proton. Water takes on whatever role is required. If water reacts with an acid, the water will be a base, and if it reacts with a base, the water will be an acid. If water reacts with an acid, the water will be a base, and if it reacts with a base, the water will be an acid. We say that water is an ampholite. An ampholite is a substance that may act as either an acid or a base. Let us recap what we have learned in this lesson. We'll start with the acid-base theories. Arrhenius proposed the theory that acids are substances that ionize in water to produce hydrogen ions and bases dissociate in water to produce hydroxide ions. According to the bronsted lowry theory, Acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. Conjugate acid-base pairs are compounds that differ by the presence of one proton, or H plus ion. We also saw that all acids have a conjugate base, which is formed when their proton has been donated. Likewise, all bases have a conjugate acid, formed after they have accepted a proton. Finally, we have learned that an ampholite is a substance that may act as either an acid or a base. That is all for today. Make sure that you attempt the questions on acid-base theories and conjugate acid-base pairs in the task video at the end of this series. Goodbye for now.